excited to have on the show um, a real person <laughs> that, <laughs> I can't. that knows what they're talking about. Um, and she's actually an old friend of mine. She's my one of my sorority sisters, and I can't even believe I know someone like this important in my life. Like this it makes smart. me yeah, this smart. It makes me feel so cool. My friend Nancy Murray Horta. She Good is morning. a divorce attorney, yes. and she just came <laughs> yes, from court, which I love. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think that's the first time in the past three years since I became a mom that someone referred to me as a real person. So all of that yeah. just made my day. Wonderful. <laughs> like, Days being made all over the place. Like Tracy, right? We, I was like, oh, um, you know, she's in court this morning. And yeah, we she was like, oh my God, she has like court this morning. You know, like she's a real person. Like she's a real lawyer. And I was like, <laughs> yeah, I get that. <laughs> <laughs> How'd it go? How'd it court go? Uh, it went fantastic. Um, you know, it's one of the best parts of my job is that people come to me and their lives are kind of broken and they're in a bad place. And then, you know, I can tell them one thing and that's if they stick with me like a year from now, they'll be in a better place. It may not be perfect, but we'll get you to a better place. And that's why I love my job. So I got to tell you, it's amazing you did this. Like you became this because like you were no bullshit in college. Like I was scared of you. So like <laughs> if I'm looking for someone to represent me against my husband, like you are the go to bad bitch. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, I'm not easily intimidated. Yet. No. Intimidated by me, and I feel like that's so weird because I'm I don't know. I don't feel intimidated. No, you like you are sweet and a very nice person, but like I'm not crossing you. No. <laughs> well, I can't. Well, hey, right back at you, right? I mean, you know, we have to be strong. You, every, every woman should be like that. Yeah, very, very true. How long have you been a divorce attorney for? Uh, about give or take 10 years. I started my career of working at the Bergen County Courthouse as a law clerk. And so I still have lots of friends over there. It's a wonderful place. And um, I've been in private practice for about four years now. Wow. wow. And you said you work exclusively in family law, right? Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah. So a lot of attorneys, you know, you come across people and they're like, yeah, I'm a lawyer. I do law stuff. Like all I do is divorce, family law, adoption, custody, child support. I don't do taxes. I don't do real estate. I don't muddle in anything else. I'm just a boutique family law practice. It is exclusive. You, know, you don't go to a dentist for open heart surgery. And this is the most important right. thing, your family. So. Very, very, very true. Um, what I'm just curious, like, what made you interested in in this part of you know law? I sort of fell into it. I've always wanted to be a lawyer, like since I was. My mom actually told me I wanted to be a lawyer when I was four. So I guess that she planted the seed, and I just always wanted to do this. Um, but I fell into the family law aspect when I was in law school. I clerked for a judge as an intern in Bergen County, and he asked me back as a law clerk. And he happened to be in the family division. So I just kind of fell into it and I really liked it and I'm good at it. So I kept at it. It's very beneficial to have. It's something that everyone is going to need, unfortunately, sometime, whether it's, you know, any range of what you do from all the family. There's just so much family drama from one person to the next. And I feel like that's what everybody needs is somebody who's exclusive to this and only does that. And that's why I feel like that you're the best that we needed to have you. Well, thank you very much. But it's also, you know, I hope that um, one of the positive things that I do and one of the things that I think is so important to know for your listeners is it's you don't have to be like in a situation where the cops are coming to your house or you're fighting over who takes the kids for Thanksgiving in order to like use me or someone like me as a resource because mm -hmm. – you know, especially women, and I, I help a lot of men too. Really, I, I don't focus on women or men, but I ha I tend to uh, work with a lot more women just because. And um, a lot of women don't have, like, they aren't empowered with the knowledge of what they're entitled to or how this process works. And then they're scared of pulling the trigger if they're in an unhappy situation. So, I right. take a long time that I need. You know, but you don't have to be at the at the cusp at the, on the brink of divorce to come and access me and say, just tell me, you know, how would this play out? So that this way, when you're having a fight, instead of saying, like, I'm going to stay here in an unfortunate situation, just, you know, you see know what your what options are. And cons are. You know, yeah. You can make an informed decision. You can be there because you want to be. And that's how everyone's family life should be. So, that's so it's a, good to, you know, keep me in my pot in your pocket. For yes. That I was, so that's a great way. Because I think a lot of women are like, at what point do I seek, you know, someone to to step in and, and help out? And like you start off with just a consultation. So someone can just almost just come see you and just talk it through with you. Right. That's exactly what it is. That And that's the way that I operate 
at any part of the process. So you call me, it's all confidential. You can pay in cash or by credit card or by check, but nobody ever has to know about it, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, you just come in and I answer your questions for an hour and then you can leave. And if you never talk to me again, that's fine. We're Facebook friends, that's no problem. But you know, you can, you'll know what you need to know. And then if you ever need to access me in the future, like, hey, this came up, I take emails two, three o'clock in the morning. Like I said, I'm a mom. So people, I tell everyone at my consultation, you know, it happens, you sit and you talk at someone for an hour. And then of course you leave, you pick up your, your car keys and you're like, crap, I forgot to ask that question. And that's all I wanted to know. Mm -hmm. So I tell everyone, just email me and I'll answer the question. And this way, you know, you can just take a deep breath and kind of go on with your life and leave this part to, to me. And for those who are going to be interested in your services for a consultation to come in and talk to you, how much does something like that run them? Well, my hourly rate is 300 but I charge $200 for my initial consultation. Okay. And then for your listeners, I'm going to give them a 50 per, uh, $50 credit. Oh, so wonderful. That's awesome. Thank you. On behalf of all the baddies. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, and all the baddies <laughs> trying to get out, out of their daddies. Yeah. <laughs> Go see Nancy. Um, yeah, well, just protect themselves, right? So, Nancy, what's like when somebody comes in for a consultation and sit down, like what's the first question that you ask? Like what do you need to know? Just curious. So what I usually tell them is I tell them my little spiel, um, you know, where what the, the ABCs of me and like what they're going to get out of the consultation. And then I tell them to try to relax um, and tell them that I'm going to lead the conversation so I can get their information because so many people come in and I'm like, oh, my God, I don't know where to start. We met mm -hmm. when we were 13. And I'm like, all right, don't go back that far for 20 Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, um, I, ask, I tell them I'm going to ask them pointed questions so that I can get the information I need so that I can properly advise them. And then once I get that, to be honest, the question that I ask is, you know, there's two. The first is, you know, why are you getting divorced or why are you in this situation? Like, why did, you know, the shit hit the fan? Right. And what is the two, cause? What do you want? Like, what is your number one goal? Because in divorce, specifically in family law, um, like 98%, and that's a generalized number over the state of New Jersey, 98% of cases settle. So one of the misconceptions that people have is they think that they're going to go and they're like, the judge needs to know this. Most of the time, the judges aren't making decisions. And that's a positive thing in our realm of, realm of the law because you're dealing with family problems. You really don't want someone that doesn't know you to come in and make a decision about your family. Right, mm -hmm. yeah. So the laws in the state of New Jersey are really geared to push people to negotiate and come to a resolution on their own. And I'm also a trained mediator in the state of New Jersey. So my, I really do focus on trying to get everyone to resolution by settlement. Right. So, um, you know, when I say, what is it that you want? Like, what is your priority here? Some people say, well, the only thing that I want is I want to be able to travel with my kids abroad to see my family once a year. Mm -hmm. Well, maybe the other side is being a jerk and you have to, you know, negotiate that and you may have to give up a couple bucks in order to get that. So I try to get a priority list. Got it. I love that. Nancy, do people ever cry in your office? Like when they're. Of course. You... Of course. I, I cry with them. I, has, I assumed uh, that they go in there and they only cry. <laughs> like I can only imagine this going very like hard and like such a difficult process, but it's almost comforting to know that like. Uh, there are so many men in that industry that like when you're a woman going through it, it's comforting to have another woman who's who you're um, speaking to about this, who's a divorce attorney, because you want them to kind of they have just more just women, have empathy. Just more empathy and yeah. compassion. I was going to ask, do you ever get emotionally attached to your clients and to their oh, stories? So many of my clients are my good friends. I mean, I have so many clients that now like. We're invited to like my baby shower and I'm invited to their kids parties and Aww. I have clients that are, you know, not very wealthy and they have little kids and I like call them on the weekend, like, please come bring your kids to my pool. Like, you know, my <sighs> pool membership, I don't want them to sit in the heat, you know, like, so yeah, we go through a really uh, like incredible process together and I get divorced 10 times a week, but some of these people and most of them, and I, and I hope a lot of them only do it once. So mm -hmm. You know, you're really bringing someone through a really serious process. And, you know, there's crying, there's laughing, there's screaming and cursing. And I tell people, I don't have any ego about this. I'm going to go home to my own family. So if you think I'm doing something wrong and you curse at me, I'm okay with it. You're not going to be abusive to me because, <laughs> you know, give it back. But <laughs> as long as we have mutual respect, that's, 
you know, but there's so much of that. It's a very emotionally charged uh, field of the law. I can't think of one that's more emotionally charged. Yeah, especially when there's kids involved. Um, oh, yeah. It's tough. Do you, do you feel like your clients, once they come see you and it's all done, like they're better off, like they're happier, like almost like a weight lifted off their shoulder? That's how I envision it. Yeah. So what I tell people all the time is I don't break up marriages. I just do the paperwork. So people come to me and they're their marriages are already over. In some instances, they've been over for years and they just haven't, you know, gotten the, the, the locomotion together to get out of it. And so that's my job. And absolutely. Yeah. We go through that. And at the end of it, there's always that sigh of relief, even if it's just for conclusion, because divorce takes on average a year. So it's wow. a long process. That's very long. Why? Why is it so long? Can it be settled faster or is it just the paperwork? Yeah, no, no, we can. I mean, there, but people say, how long does it take? Two, two months to two years is the, you know, the lawyer answer. Whoa. Um, but on average, That's such a here. stretch. Uh. And I come up with that number for a bunch of reasons. I mean, that's the common. That's the common timeline, but also um, the state of New Jersey sets standards for the court system by which, like the best practice standards by which we have to conclude it, and you're supposed to get the case done in 365 days. Um, but, you know, there's a lag time. You file a complaint for divorce, and then it, you have 90 days to serve the other party. Sometimes mm. you don't want to serve the other party because it's their birthday or your kid's birthday or the anniversary or your kid has a dance recital or whatever. So these things just take time and finesse. Yeah. Um, well, it makes sense now why like getting a divorce, it's so expensive because it's not, it's a lot it's of work, a yeah. lot of man hours, Yeah, a lot of yeah. man hours. I get it. Don't forget, guys, new clips air every Thursday. So see you next Thursday. Hosted on dimlywit.com. Even though we are not your best examples, uh, we're the best you've got. So cheers, bitches. Cheers. Make sure you subscribe to our channel for updates. And if you like this clip, share it with a friend.